The rear mech is one of the more vulnerable parts of the bike, and at some point you might be unlucky enough to smash yours on a rock, bending it all out of shape. Now, if that happens, unless you're planning on walking home, you're going to need to bend it into some kind of operational state. And here's how you do it. Now, as you can see, this mech has actually had a bit of a clobber and it's the lower cage basically is twisted. Uh, this was actually caught. Now, there's a few effects of this. The first one is just basic pedaling is massively hampered, like it's completely not in line, so it's not going to work. It also means the indexing of the gears has no chance because of the fact that it, the cages just do not line up. But also, some of the gears are completely inaccessible. So I'm not going to be able to shift down into the highest gear because the cage just won't get there because of how distorted it is. But more importantly, because of the way it's bent and most derailleurs, when you hit them, tend to either twist or bend towards the spokes. If I was to try and shift into the lower gears, there's a good chance that derailleur will catch in the spokes and end up getting ripped off. Now, of course, that's pretty bad because you could damage that, you could damage the hanger, you might snap the chain, you might snap a bunch of spokes, and then you're in a whole realm of different issues. So, you need to address it straight away, and we're going to show you two major methods. First one is on the bike, the second one is by removing it and just giving a bit more welly. But given that you're probably going to want to just get out of, get out of Dodge, basically get home and deal with it later, let's do the on the bike version first. Okay, first things first, I'm on my own at the side of the trail, so I'm leaning my bike up against a tree. But if you've got a friend with you, it's much easier to get them to hold the bike because you're going to need to wrestle the derailleur quite a bit to get it back in shape. Now, before you jump in and start bending it around over the place, have a good look at it from all angles. Now, from the back, I can see it's bent in towards the spokes, but when I look down from above, it's actually twisted at an angle, so you do need to take that into account before you start bending things. Now, if you've been watching a lot of our videos, you know we always say to go prepared, so hopefully you'll have a set of different gloves or some riding gloves, even some rubber gloves like these in your bag. You're gonna get messy doing this, so it's a good idea to put some of those on. And then just getting a little bit closer and just actually see what is going on. Have a look at the actual cage of the derailleur. If there's any stress marks on it where it looks like the metal's weakened from the impact, it might snap when you bend it back, in which case it's a no starter. So, the best bit of advice for that would be to use your limit screws, screw it in so you can't actually shift outside a certain area, give yourself maybe a gear or two if you're lucky, and that'll be sufficient just to get yourself out. Bit of a pain, but you'll be able to pedal out rather than walking out. However, I'm gonna get cracking with this one. And the last thing on here, just to acknowledge, is the actual mech hanger with bolts to the frame. This one is completely arrow straight. I can see there's no issues with this, but your mech hanger actually might be bent. In which case, you need to be very careful because some of them are designed to actually bend and break and some of them you might actually just snap in the process. So you have to support everything when you do this. So I'm just going to put a pair of gloves on and get involved with it. One other thing you might have observed is I've got my bike upright on the wheels. You might think it's easier to flip your bike upside down and do this. Well, technically, you can get better access to the derailleur, but you're not going to be able to be completely in line with it in the same way. I've got a much better vantage point here looking down from above on the cassette and in at the back of the bike. It's just going to enable me to get it that bit straighter, a bit easier. Okay, so clutch off if you're using a Shimano mech. Uh, if you've got a SRAM mech, you can't really do anything about that. But it's good to sort of cycle that lower cage around and it might help you see just where that bend is actually coming from. Now it appears it's actually coming from the top of this cage looking in on this one. And I suspect holding this, I'm gonna have to kneel in on the wheel there, I can bend this out. Now note how I'm holding the top part of the derailleur here because I don't want any movement to occur at the hanger, which is at, like that's completely fine. The movement that's occurred where it's had the impact has definitely moved the bottom part of the cage. And you can see there's paint missing here where it's actually hit the ground or a rock or whatever it hit. Now you wanna constantly monitor it as it's happening, as you're doing this, to see how it lines up. Still too far round. You can be surprisingly aggressive with it. Like I said, you have to monitor it because I don't plan on walking out of here and I'd think that you probably don't want to either. Now, a derailleur that's 
bent and you can get it back into shape. I've ran bent derailleurs for many years and to be fair, they're okay. Your shifting can get a bit vague, but it's possible to keep on running one of these for quite some time. So it's definitely worth doing this. But like I say, if you're unsure, you might just wanna screw those limit screws in, get the single gear and then do this from home when you've got access to some better tooling or some tooling. <laughs> So I've done a pretty good job of bending it back, but it looks like the actual upper part, the parallelogram might be twisted. So I'm not gonna interfere with it anymore because I can get a few gears here. That's like pretty good. It's clear that I can't get down into the highest gear. So I'm actually gonna screw in the limit screws there. So it's that stuck in that gear. I'm also gonna screw in the, the lowest gear. So it can't get into that bigger one because I don't wanna risk that, what is now quite a baggy lower cage getting hit into the spokes. So there we go. So I lose those two bottom gears, I lose the lowest gear. And it should in theory mean I'll get five or six gears that work, which is a result as far as I'm concerned. Okay, option two then, if you don't think you can straighten your mech on the bike or if it's really mangled and you're miles from home, uh, you'll need to take it off. So something I recommend everyone carry is a set of tire levers like these ones you can clip together forming a little set of chain pliers. There's a few on the market, these ones are Topeak. You can also carry a spare joining link, depending on which chain you have, on the actual tool itself. Now you need to split your chain, remove it from the bike, don't leave it in a puddle or anything like that, clearly. And then you can start the process of removing the mech from the bike itself. The tool is pretty straightforward, as you'd imagine. You just line it up and you use it like a set of pliers to break that link. Now don't forget, most of these links are not reusable, so you'll need to have a spare to rejoin it, or if you're lucky enough to have a chain tool in your bike, you can use a chain tool to rejoin your chain. But wherever possible, use a fresh link, it's the safest way to do it. So that's why it's a good idea to keep a set on the actual tool, or if you're even more prepared, on your handlebars. I always have a spare link taped on the bars uh, for the relevant speeds of the bike, obviously 12 speed, 11 speed, whatever you have always worth having these to hand. So now it's just a case of remove that chain. Again, this is why having a set of gloves is a good idea. And it's time to remove the, the cable on the back here. You can see I actually have lost cable end cap, but it's not frayed. So this is something you'll need to pay attention to because this cable needs to come back through the mech in order to uh, reinstall it to the bike. If you're on like a, a multi-day mission, you're probably gonna have a few more tools than I have now, but I'm pretty limited. So I've just gotta be careful here. Again, make sure your clutch is off so you can actually hold it out of the way. If you've got a SRAM derailleur, you can use the cage lock on there. Remove the derailleur and then we're gonna go and find a tree stump, something like that. It's a bit flat that I can use to my advantage to help straighten it out. I'm just gonna use the, the entire cage here as a bit of leverage just to bend it back. A bit easier to do this off the bike in this case, but not always so marginally straighter. Debatable, to be fair. But I've noticed that the inner part of the cage is actually quite bent, so I'm gonna remove that. That should be much easier to manipulate when it's not being supported by the outer one. Much easier now, yeah. <laughs> As I say, if you do this too much, you'll probably run the risk of snapping it, but uh, questionable, but it's better. In fact, that's going to do it. Put that cage back on again. It kind of looks all right. I think that's good enough to get back on. If you did need to remove yours or remove the cable, just try and twist it back as best as possible, because they do tend to sort of get a bit frayed at the end. Uh, it's only got to pass through just the hole on the neck itself like that, and then you're home and free, basically. Now just get it rooted correctly around that pinch bolt. Right, let's get the chain back on with that fresh link. Obviously without a work stand, this sort of thing can be a little fiddly. So you just gotta make sure that you follow the correct route for the chain, make sure it passes through and it doesn't run the wrong side of that little metal tab there something to say when you're joining the chain you can just pull this taut at this stage then you want to get this link onto the upper part of the chain here and that's where you can snap it into place using the pedals so just watch it 
fact it doesn't line up as it goes around here. And there it is on the top. And then with the chain on the top side here, this is where the most tension is, you can use the pedals to snap it into place. Check it's on on both sides and you're good to start indexing your gears again. So although the cage is clearly still a bit bent, I can actually get those higher gears back, but I'm a bit nervous about the lowest gear. So I'm going to screw in my limit screw. So the upper limit screw there for that lower gear or, or the lower screw for the lower gear. Um, but I'm pretty pleased I can, I can actually see all daylight there. I can get a bit of movement on that derailleur cage. However, it is pretty risky bending it when it is that bent. This was pretty dramatic. So you could risk arguably snapping your actual derailleur. So you have to really support where you're bending it, which is why I chose to take this one off to bend that bit. But as I proved earlier on, by holding the actual body of the derailleur, you can actually get a good amount of pressure to move those lower cages. But who are we kidding? This isn't like a, di a direct how-to. This is just how to get around this situation because it will happen at some point and preferably you want to ride home and that's how you do it. But like I said, if you do struggle with this and you don't actually touch it for fear of snapping it and having to walk home, use those limit screws. They're surprisingly useful what you can do with them. It might just mean you get a single gear or maybe a gear or two. And you can also use a barrel adjuster, the shifter to screw in cable tension just to hold the derailleur in position. All you need is one gear, something middle of the block, and hopefully you can ride back out again. Um, well, it's certainly not perfect, far from it in fact, but it does mean I've got a few gears and I can get out of here safely. So um, hopefully you've learned something from this video. Um, let us know what you think in the comments. See you in the next one.